Our next caller is Joanna from Canada. Hey, Joanna, how can we help you? Hi. Um, so, uh, first of all, big fan for several months now. I actually got into listening to Mind Pump after I came back from uh, deployment in Africa because I was quarantined and had not much to do. So I happened across your podcast and have been listening ever since. Um, so basically, I got into bodybuilding and fitness a few uh, years ago competitively. Before that, I would do resistance training, um, but not really with any specific goal in mind. And bodybuilding, especially unilateral training, really helped me to identify like imbalances and stuff because I do have a pretty sedentary job. And um, so that really helped. Um, so my question is, I'm ready to kind of change my programming up. And I know you guys talk a lot about um, switching things up, increasing or decreasing rest periods, incorporating supersets, uh, changing tempo, stuff like that. So before I start to make changes, I would like to know how long should I incorporate these changes until I should see a difference versus if I try it for, you know, a couple of weeks and I don't really notice anything, at what point should I move on and try incorporating a different kind of change, if that makes sense? Oh, yeah. yeah that's a good, good question. That's a really good question. Okay. So, number one, when you make a, a, a change in your programming and you want to monitor how it's working for you or if it's working, you have to know what to look for. So, what do I mean by that? If I switch to a, a long rest period, low rep phase of training, what I'm looking for is strength. I'm looking to see if I'm moving more weight or doing you know, more repetitions with the same amount of weight so long as I stay within the rep range. But usually it's more weight that I'm kind of looking for. Well, what if I'm doing supersets or shorter rest periods? What am I looking for? Now, strength is always welcome, but I'm not really looking for that. I'm looking for, do I have more strength stamina? Am I getting a better pump? Um, you know, am I getting, is my technique even better with my exercises while I'm fatigued, right? Let's say my phase is more into mobility and practicing the technique. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is range of motion. I have control over, uh, do I feel it more in the, in the target muscles? Am I doing better, you know, form and technique overall? So you got to know what to look for because if you're looking for the wrong thing in the wrong phase. Yeah, you might think you're not doing a good job when you are. Totally. Like when I do supersets with short rest periods, like I don't care about adding weight to the bar. In fact, in the past when I did care about that with supersets, it would really screw me up. Now I'm looking for, am I getting a better pump, better feel? Do I have more stamina at the end of my set? Am I breathing as hard as I did, you know, before? That kind of stuff. Now, one thing to keep in mind if this is all, you know, confusing, which probably not for you, you've been working out for a while, but let's say somebody's listening and they're like, okay, well, yeah, that's kind of, okay, I got to listen to my body, but you know, what does that look like? Generally speaking, about three to five weeks is when you want to switch out of a phase. So about three to five weeks, you want to move out and that'll prevent you from, you know, from plateauing. That'll prevent you from hitting a wall. Usually people wait till they hit a wall before they switch. The problem with that is it's a little harder to back out. Uh, when that happens. So about three to five weeks. Now that first week or two, here's why I typically don't tell people to switch out one, you know, week one or week two, that first week or two, especially if you make big changes is going to suck. Mm -hmm. Like if I go from heavy, long rest periods to short rest periods or supersets, <clears throat> like that first week is going to feel like crap. I'm just going to, I'm going to do my squats or whatever. And I'm going to be like this. I, I just, I'm, I'm weak. I don't feel good. It's just because my body is not used to that. So you got to give it at least two or three weeks before you can kind of pass, you know, judgment on whether or not it's working for you. Yeah. If you're doing it right in the beginning, I mean, that should be a major shift for you in terms of like your focus. So that way you, you are going to kind of go through that period of, uh, relearning, uh, you know, some of these movements that you probably haven't incorporated in a while. So they are going to kind of suck. It's going to be a grind and you have to give it ample time to, you know, for your body to respond uh, uh, the way it needs to respond. So yeah, at least like three weeks, a lot of times you're not going to even really feel like you're getting good at it. Well, the only one that just the, the one example you gave Sal, where you increase your, uh, time, right. Your rest period. That's about the only one you're going to see actually a very positive, uh, impact. Everything else, if you superset, you're you going to get you weak right away. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, when we talk about weight, 
right? Yeah, yeah. You get it like, cause that's like the easiest measure for everybody. It's like, oh, I'm getting stronger, yeah. right? Every, everything else, like if you're, you're getting weaker, you're going to feel more tired. All, if you add supersets, you're going to feel more fatigued, right? Mm -hmm. If you, you cut your, your rest period, you're going to be weaker. Like so that doesn't mean it's not working. Like it's, mm -hmm. that, that's the adaptation that you're, tr you're going after. So you kind of just have to trust the process and know that where, where you're really going to tell is when you go back to what you were doing before. Yeah. Right. So whatever, you, whatever you, you, you do mo most consistently, you move out of that messing with tempo and rest periods and stuff like that. And then when you come back to that, that's where you should feel or notice like yeah. the biggest change. Well, it's a great point too, because I've got a lot of uh, people reach out like phase two of performance. It's like totally different, right? It's not that, you know, strength is something that's like, you, you kind of like recognize that right away, but being able to uh, move efficiently in different directions and then be strong. And that is, is not something super obvious right away, but it's very beneficial. So, you know, there's ways of altering your programming that have massive benefit that aren't like so visibly yeah. obvious. Yeah. Joanna, here's a good rule of thumb. Stay in a phase until you feel like you're good at it. So that's usually takes about three weeks. Usually takes about three weeks when you feel like, oh man, I'm, I'm really good at this. And then you can start to think about switching out. Do not wait until it stops working. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make. I make that still because I get excited about a particular phase, especially if it's heavy. I just want to keep going. And then I hit a wall and then it takes me like two weeks to back out and I have to deload and do all that other crap. So you're better off moving out before you plateau. The opposite is true though, too. There's a lot of people that will, you know, oh, I'm going to try it. And they try it for two workouts and they're like, oh, I don't yeah, like no, this. You got to go longer than <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. You know, trust the process. At least three weeks. I like being more like four or five. So, and you'll find out everybody's body's a little bit different. So stick to it for at least three or so weeks. And then, and then you can go yeah. back and measure how your progress Joanna, is. Joanna, do you, do you have any of our programs? I have most of your programs. <laughs> oh, excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Are you in our forum? That's why you're in good shape. Are you I am in your form. Oh, <laughs> all right. Damn, well, we got nothing to I'm give you, good. girl. Don't you? Do you want anything for free? Do we have anything <laughs> we can offer you for free? <laughs> yeah, pictures of Adam I or something. Yeah. Too, like last month, so I'm like everywhere. Excellent. Well, we we appreciate um, you. I do. I do have another question though that was in my initial email. Okay. Um. So it's about my glutes and hamstrings, which I know is like a bikini bodybuilder's nemesis. Um. So I have a. I have a lot of trouble gaining muscle in my bottom half as well as uh, losing fat there because, you know, hormones or whatever. Um, so I do have a program that has three lower body and two upper body days a week. Um, but I do have MAPS Anabolic and I'm hoping to start that um, probably next week is my plan. So my question is about the trigger sessions. Um should they be incorporated like, and I did notice the calendar, but it's there every day that you're not doing a foundational exercise, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm but we have, we have, what? we have a butt builder bundle. Do you have that? I have that. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's... But, uh, okay. You can also do trigger <laughs> sessions and make them focus on the glutes and hamstrings and then start your lower body workouts with glute and hamstring work. So rather than going straight into squats, I would do a glute exercise like hip thrusts. I would do something for hamstrings and then move into the rest Tube of the walks, of the leg work. Yeah, leg workout. So prioritize those those you know target areas always in your workouts. That'll that'll be the best thing you could do. The the other thing that when when training my bikini competitors is it's it's hard to build too if you're in a cut a lot. So you got to be you have to understand that like if you're trying to build your glutes and you're also leaning out at the time. Uh, the likelihood of you actually seeing your glutes uh, good point. build and develop is very unlikely. So you got to put, you got to, you got to be on a bulk. So you got to definitely yeah. increase your calorie intake while you're also training or switching your programming up to develop the yeah. glutes. So a lot of times when I get these com bikini competitors and I look at their diet and I'm like, well, you're not feeding enough. It's just, it's no different than the guy who wants to build his biceps. If He's in a calorie deficit all the time. He could do all the bicep curls in the world. He's not going to see his biceps get any bigger. So the same thing goes for that. So I would the the uh, calories and then also you know being able to have good glute activation in those big movements like the squats and deadlifts. So priming the glutes before any of my my leg days for sure. Those are the two main keys that I would make sure you're paying attention to. Yeah, you look pretty lean. So I think a bulk would probably be a good idea for this uh, for this particular goal. Yeah, I pulled out of competing this year so we're doing my reverse right now and the goal is to move into wellness next year because i think it's a more sustainable and like 
yes don't work with me i'll crush you with my legs kind of look which i like (laughs) um for trigger sessions though is it basically any exercise can be a trigger yep yep kind of exercise yep. as long as it focuses on that okay. yep as yeah, long but, as it's but, low intensity yes, and you're just getting a pump that's the key that the thing that people end up doing is they turn it into like a workout it's they're designed to be 12 minutes with rubber bands and so if you are going to do let's say like glute bridges or something instead yeah. of like you know rubber band bicep curls which everybody does yeah. j- just just keep in mind that you're just trying to get like a light pump you're not trying to really fatigue uh the muscle yeah. right all right well, thanks cool. for calling. Thanks for calling, Joanna. Sorry we couldn't give you anything for free. Yeah, yeah. Make, sure you say hi in the, make sure you say hi in the forum. We appreciate your patronage. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, good Good question about the whole phasing. Thing. Canada has a military? Yeah. They, yes. that is, that's a hot deal. Yeah. They, they, they just, they just go to the- rising, right? I didn't yeah. know. They just go to the- That's the en- first, first person I ever heard. They just go to the enemy and apologize. No, <laughs> sorry. So, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, you know, good question, right? Because- that's the biggest, that's still a challenge for me is knowing your, when your glutes? to move. No, I have ex- excellent. <laughs> knowing when to move no, in and out of, of phases. Like when do you switch? When do you come out? When do you go into the, you know, and especially when there's phases that you just don't have as much fun in. So yeah. always a challenge. It's, well, that's it, why too, it's it's uh, a good idea to have a program. So you have something that yes, like kind of takes you puts you on that. a schedule. It, yeah, on a schedule. And a lot of times you can, uh, you can go through that and, and find out, oh, that's why I kept doing this for an extended amount of time because like your own intuition a lot of times can trick you. You you said she looked, I couldn't see her from here. You said she looked really lean. She looked like she lifts weights and she's lean. She, oh, yeah. she looked really pretty well developed I mean, from the, you know, the neck up or whatever from the shoulders. Yeah. Can. All the bikini competitors I trained, that was always the, the glute and hamstring. That's everything right for those yeah, shows. Yeah. That's what win shows for sure for the girls. But I, most of them were trying to build a butt, and one, they were doing all these high rep exercises, and then stay in freaking yeah. and super that's lean a great body point. fat, and yeah. they're in a deficit. Calories, it's yeah. like, yeah, they're in a deficit, and they're doing all these like you know pumping butt exercises. It's like, oh, dude, you're never going to grow. Like, throw yourself on a nice yeah. bulk and go get get some heavy yeah. squats feed, and deadlifts. Yeah, 